Thank you very much. Uh, towards the end of the day, I think we want to make it lively and you know, as much as possible entertaining as well as educational. So we want to talk about the interdisciplinary collaboration in healthcare. And we know that healthcare is a very diverse kind of an institution because in, the, in a hospital, you see a very highly skilled brain surgeon. And in the same hospital, you see an ambulance driver driving an ambulance. You see a software engineer as well. You might see a finance professional. 30 to 40%, maybe more, are nurses. So there are different kinds of people that work in a hospital. Unlike a software company where everybody is a software engineer. So that's why the interdisciplinary and the collaboration becomes important. So my first question to uh, Dr. Raza, uh, what, is the, what are the challenges in this interdisciplinary system that we are trying to create in hospitals and trying to collaborate and how does one navigate through this complex landscape? Uh, thank you very much, Vivek. Uh, this is essentially a technology-oriented uh, discussion, and I will purely bring my 40 years of uh, experience in healthcare and practical application of, health, of technology. Uh, for me, technology is enabler, and in healthcare, that we have to keep in mind. So, Vivek, I will start with the first, first uh, component of this question. What are the key challenges? The key challenges all over the world in healthcare industry is aging population and cost of healthcare going up. I was, I was shocked to see some of the statistics of US. 70 to 80% of the healthcare is spent in the management of chronic diseases. US is spending more than $1.5 trillion equivalent to 6% of GDP on the management of chronic health diseases. And number one on the list is diabetes. Number two is cardiac. Number three is Alzheimer's. Number four is osteoarthritis. If you look at diabetes management, actually, I come from healthcare, but irony is the care is not patient-centric. The care is business-centric which is the unfortunate fact. The diabetic patients are stuck. Forgive me the physicians, GPs, if they're sitting here, with GPs and physicians lifelong. And there are certain, certain statistics which are disturbing that they spent on healthcare. Like for example, if we see in UAE, the per capita is spent on insurance by insurance is 5,000 dirhams per person. But uh, as per my discussion with insurance companies, the spend on diabetic patients is from 8,000 to 48,000. So this is the same thing which is happening in US. Now, if you see, and we have been into healthcare, we have seen that patients are stuck. What is happening is they go into all sorts of complications. They go into cardiac, they go into duro, they go into podiatry, they go into all sorts of lifestyle diseases. So the solution is, coming back to this situation, the solution is interdisciplinary approach. And at, we at Rack Hospital, we came up some, with something innovative concept, which is called diabetic passport. That means, you know, technology is the enabler. Technology will not come in treating diabetes. Technology is an enabler. So what we have done is that we make sure once a patient comes to a diabetologist, there is a protocol with which a patient has to see a cardiologist, a neurologist, a podiatrist, a nephrologist, a urologist, and nutritionist over a period of time. And we try to make it a cycle. But some of the interesting facts are that diabetic patients come to only GPs and physicians and they get stuck there and they visit only once or twice. Another important statistic says from the US again, that if patients are managed well in outpatient environment with the help of multidisciplinary teams, 40% of the patients could be kept away from hospitalization. So these are the people who are consuming and eating up the entire healthcare budget. So what we have done is we have developed processes, protocols, and with this, the patient is encouraged to see it. Now comes the role of technology. We have gone for some disease management tools, and with that, what is happening is 
you know, cost of healthcare is because of high deployment of manpower. So the technology has helped in reducing the deployment of manpower. Suppose my diabetic educator or the counselor has to nudge a patient every time he needs to see a cardiologist, a podiatrist, a neurophysician, it costs so much money. So with technology as an enabler, we are doing disease management program. And what we have done is with this technology, disease management, fortunately it comes from India, and I would not want to name the uh, company, but they have done a great job, and so many hospitals are using it here, and it has done wonders. So to the insurance companies, we go to them and pitch to them that give me diabetic patients. Not only I will improve their quality of life, but also reduce the cost. So with the deployment of technology, with the use of multidisciplinary approach, we are not only able to improve the health of the patient, but save the cost. So this is complete 360 integrated care model where technology is playing as enabler. So a very important thing is, I'll cite another example to this. We did a campaign and we wanted to address this obesity problem in UAE, 10 to 15% population suffers. We all make money, but we also have a responsibility towards the community and society we are part of. If I could make some difference to their lives, it's a great achievement. So what we did was, we did a campaign of, uh, of biggest loser in HbA1c. And we wanted to break a myth because people think that if I'm taking diabetic management the medication, I can afford to live any lifestyle, I can afford to eat anything, and they go into complications. So we, did, we took up a challenge, diabetic challenge, and this was towards the community, because we have a responsibility towards community. And we did a challenge without changing the medication, with the help of lifestyle and nutrition and exercise, three months challenge, and we saw 5,000 people participate, average loss of HbA1c was 2 without altering medication. This was purely by creating consciousness and awareness in the community. So that is the role we healthcare providers have to play and towards the community and society. So what I'm trying to say, we have bigger responsibility, but with the technology as enabler, we are able to reduce the cost by 20%. So thank you very much, Vivek. Thank you. I think that was very enlightening, giving us the bigger picture and also highlighting the key challenges and highlighting the importance of technology as an, as an enabler. Uh, for, uh, for Rakesh, I just wanted to ask you on, you know, being at the corporate level for corporate affairs, sometimes with the units and with each individual business entity or the SBUs that you have, people want to look at only their particular unit, or they only want to look at how they are doing. Or talking about a hospital or a healthcare scenario, a doctor wants to only be bothered about how well the patient is doing, and he doesn't want to bother about the rest of the ecosystem. Or they don't want to refer this patient to somebody else. So there is always a tendency in us human beings to keep things limited to ourselves and miss out on the bigger picture. So are there any examples, best practices, or something that you want to highlight where we can bring people back to looking at the bigger picture and collaborating with each other and going beyond the individual thoughts that they have for themselves. Thank you. I'll give you a common man's perspective. For our experts here, professionals here, I am not at all associated with healthcare business. Now healthcare is a very specialized business, job and service to the humanity. A lot of players are involved in it. Hospitals, pharmaceutical industries, medical equipment manufacturers, so many agencies are there. And of course government is there. Any state or any country, the government has to control the healthcare because of its obligation to the population. But at the center of this healthcare operation is the patient. A common man, whether he is rich or poor, he is or she is a patient. Now his journey, the, the patient's journey starts with when he has some problem or she has some problem, he goes to a doctor. 
mostly we go to the general practitioner the diagnosis takes place lot of tests and then the doctor suggests the treatment most of the treatment is general treatment and in some aspects the specialized treatment is recommended so the patient goes to the specialists treatment takes place during that treatment period he has to come across he or she has to come across of lot of facilities in the hospital and then of course medicines surgery whatever spends a lot of money on that role of insurance companies come in somebody was mentioning about the cashless treatment or cash something of that sort and then after the treatment the patient recuperates the mental well being of the patient is equally important so mental health comes into the play and after the recuperation then we have an awareness in almost all the country all over the world about the wellness of a common man like we have wellness centers all over the world in which some traditional treatments are there like ayurvedic treatment and all and this circle is complete when this awareness grows so you go to the preventive medicine aspect of it so this is the entire circle in which this health care business operates the doctors are there paramedic staff is there pharmaceutical industries are there medical equipment manufacturers are there and so many people are associated with that health insurance companies are there so as dr raza has said all these things generate a lot of data then data analytics comes into the play who will analyze these data software people come in to play and then this industry is goes on my point is that in this entire operation the patient has to feel that he has been taken care of whatever technology you adopt whatever your dependence is on technology for recommending an appropriate treatment to the patient unless there is a personal touch of the doctor towards that patient that satisfaction is not generated that is my point thank you i think very valid point keep the patient at the center of everything and then the interdisciplinary collaboration can take care of itself because if everyone is committed to one goal which is the benefit of the patient then all the stakeholders can align themselves on that uh talking about alignment my question to vikas is how do you create a culture in an organization how do you foster a culture where alignment and collaboration becomes the order of the day okay thank you uh, vivek for this question see i see this uh, question as generic to any industry right healthcare is nothing but a service industry which means human capital is the most important part here right be it patient be it customer care executive be it front office be it ceo be it owner every everything is that moves around the patient and human capital now we see any any uh, business for that matter right obviously to create a culture of change is always difficult right uh, though we keep saying change is the constant thing in our life but it's hard i'm sure dr raza would be seeing this every day from last 40 years right uh, so there are many examples like i will share some of the example which we have seen in the previous past i started my new journey as an entrepreneur right the first thing is you have to lead by example right like you rightly said sometimes it becomes a individual responsibility everyone wants technology but when it comes to technology implementation it becomes only it manager task right and then finance will come in picture that i'll save the cost ceo has his own agenda right so first you have to lead by example which means the vision should be very clear right it cannot be i want to implement a right if the vision is such for example i have a problem my problem statement is i want to cut down the turnaround time of the patient right i want to have a paperless system or i want to make a customer experience even better once you have a clear vision then you move towards what is the equation right so that's that's number 2 you know be a leader uh, have a clear uh, vision 
after that which matters the most provide the resources also right easy to have, not easy but yeah it's easy to have your own vision be a leader but if you don't provide the resources again it's like the execution part doesn't work right so that's more important provide their sources and after that i would say have a clear communication also right uh, i'm very clear what i want my finance guy is very clear what he wants but eventually if the entire ecosystem like a doctor right doctor is always i don't want the system i'm happy with my patient right which i think is important personal touch is my own belief uh, though i come from a finance and it background cannot be replaced by all means right uh like i'll share a key example when we started our business right everyone told me have a call center have a scale blah 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 when it was a bootstrap business we said remove i said personally remove this call center keep this phone with one person so like you don't want to have a call like a bank right you call customer care and says wait for a wait for b wait for z and that actually resulted in a very positive way and we have approximately 60 70% people retention they come back because they they feel it is easy right it's a simple step but it it have a huge impact on our system operations right so there are many i would say small small example of technology is hard but try to i would say utilize it what you can right no point of having a fancy word of ai rpa when you ask people what is rpa is robotic automation right have you ever seen at automation anywhere else in a common field in healthcare right they'll say ah i saw it in newspaper or on portal so simplest thing of how can you reduce the time how can you you know make system which is patient centric uh, and i would say keep keep moving towards the patient centric care like uh, you know the speaker has said very clearly uh, again numbers is important for everyone i would say but number doesn't come without patient centric approach right so the approach should be patient centric uh, and yes communication and then reward the system also you have a system you have a, everything you have outcome but if you don't uh, celebrate what is going right in not in terms of number but in terms of a patient satisfaction your npa score right which is the critical part for any organization so those are the things i would say take it and then keep going and and in the end i would say is the automation and this change is is not a task it's a process it's a journey right sometimes it takes few months sometimes it takes years so i think we should encourage that so that as long as i would say technology can ease the operation i think is better if it complex the situation we don't need that thank you yes i think the last part was very useful if the technology makes it easy adopt it but if it complicates it further do not adopt it just for the sake of adopting technology and i think also some important things that you stressed upon was having a vision having a dream in which you can align everybody else so that makes a big difference to create a culture for collaboration and leading by example for sure because you cannot expect others to follow if you don't lead by example so i think some very good points there uh, moving on to dr rohit uh, and since you are a doctor i will ask you a quick because you have you know doctors are highly educated right so what is the uh, role of education in interdisciplinary collaboration in healthcare or otherwise well it plays a major role and uh, the main thing should be a problem solving it should be conceptualizing con and when we talk about problem solving you should have your mission vision and values clear once you have your mission vision and values clear in the organization it's your all the problems solutions are in your organization if a leader is there he can identify many times what we do is someone is not performing we try to replace it let's find another leader we never go and do any workshop if we start doing a workshop and we'll find the all the solutions are there itself and that's the main solution to it doing workshop in the organization uh, we have seen many of the ceos and the leaders if you have a team and you start doing a workshop take the team out they will be having the problems and they'll be having the solution but there's no one to listen many time they are normal if there's a valet parking issue is there there will be a issue which is not being escalated many times to the top or there's a patient coming to the emergency for facing some problem so all these things as a leader comes into the picture and it's a leader job to take it and your mission vision and value should be clear thank you 
think a very good uh, thing that doctor pointed out that the solutions, you know, when, and you know, we run hospitals. So the solutions are actually there in the hospital itself. And they are there with the lower level staff itself. If you would care to go out and ask them, yes. you can get the solution from within the system. There's no need to replace the person rather right. than have an open communication and you can find solutions exactly where the problem is. Thank you very much, Thank uh, you. doctor. Uh, moving on to uh, Dr. Saleh. Dr. Saleh is an economist. So uh, my question to you, doctor, is that for this interdisciplinary collaboration that we all are talking about, does it make economic sense? And how, I mean, how does it make uh, in healthcare economic sense to have better and wider collaboration amongst different stakeholders? Very good. Thank you very much for the question. Actually, you know, you left me at the end, so I have nothing to say. I mean, all my colleagues have said everything. So, um, as an economist, as a, a senior policy advisor in the government, uh, I'm going to give you my opinion about the healthcare sector and the economic growth that we are witnessing in the healthcare sector. You know, uh, it's really a business. Uh, we're talking about healthcare industry, right? About uh, um, healthcare business. Uh, when I was young, 60 years ago, 70 years ago, yeah, maybe eight years ago. <laughs> now, when I was young, uh, in my country, in the Middle East, uh, we used to call the doctor the wise man, Hakim. He was not a doctor. I mean, the word doctor was not in place. So uh, they used to say, uh, can you call the, can you call the, um, the wise guy or the wise uh, person? So healthcare, uh, is really a business, but uh, there's a moral, as you've said, uh, your first speaker, as you said, that there is a moral and there is an ethical part which is very important in healthcare business. Uh, especially when we know that uh, the healthcare sector in the UAE is one of the fast growing sectors in the UAE economy, with nearly, uh, with nearly about 2,000 hospitals, about uh, 5,000 or 6,000 uh, medical centers, uh, 140,000 people working in, in this industry in the, the uh, UE. We are one of the most competitive sectors uh, in the UE economy. We're, by the way, in terms of competitiveness, in terms of competence, we are number one in three indicators. Two are very important, the um, early prevention and the, uh, the uh, social security coverage per habitant. UAE is number one. So that gives us an idea about the uh, importance that the government is giving to the healthcare sector and to the investment in healthcare sector. As a, an economic advisor or as, or as a policy advisor, I would urge and ask the business to collaborate with the government. Uh, Nowadays, with the technology, and you know better than me that uh, technology and artificial intelligence became a very important part of the healthcare industry all around the world. And you know how the government in the UAE is, uh, is uh, uh, giving lots of importance on the uh, artificial intelligence and IT sector and technologies in uh, the UAE. So I'm urging the healthcare sector to invest. It's true that you're making a business, but as a policy advisor, I know the government is really uh, opening doors to joint investment in the intellectual uh, asset and intellectual property in the healthcare system. I would urge you to cooperate with the government in building a healthcare industry in the UAE, a national healthcare industry. Because, you know, some of the industries here, um, one of the characteristics of the of the business, not the industry. I'm not talking about healthcare, by the way. Uh, don't get me wrong. Uh, most of the industries here and the business, it's a hits and run, you know. Uh, most of the business uh, are not sustainable. But healthcare, health, a doctor that is coming to this country or to a country um, to cure patient is someone that is coming here to live. And this is a sign of sustainability. So I would urge the healthcare industry to build sustainable program with the government. And this is number one. And number two, I think that one of the areas that are going to be very promising, uh, except that this is a long-term term, term um, 
project or vision, and your business is always concentrating on short-term and medium-term incubators. Uh, I would urge the healthcare sector to work on incubators with the government, especially the incubators that um, um, are in the domain of uh, technology uh, and with the universities. There's a lot of uh, uh, students, and I, I'm a professor of economics. I teach at the university, and I know that we have lots of research at the universities in the UE. Those people need support, not only financial support, but technical assistance. And I think that the idea of incubators would be a new idea for the uh, healthcare uh, uh, um, sector to work for the government, to work on promoting intellectual property and intellectual assets in the healthcare uh, sector. And I think that uh, this is uh, going to be uh, one of the very promising dimensions of the healthcare system uh, in the UAE. Thank you so much. Dr. Saleh, I would like to add something here because uh, there is again a myth that uh, multidisciplinary approach, if I adopt, I may lose revenue, I may lose profits. And uh, uh, some of the doctors are very possessive about patients. But uh, I would like to emphasize here with our practical approach, we have seen that in diabetic management, once we have moved from a single doctor to multidisciplinary team, we have been able to reduce the cost by 20%. But again, from business angle, uh, my shareholders will tell me, you are in a business of making money, not losing money. But in healthcare, the mainstay, the marketing remains positive word of mouth and patient experience. If with the help of multidisciplinary approach and deployment of technology and disease management, I'm able to improve the health with better outcomes and with cost saving, the stickiness improves and the word of mouth with the family improves and the family becomes loyal to the institution forever. And I have directly, indirectly, very, very positive word of mouth for my institution, my team within the community. So that is the uh, result I get. So I'm able to save uh, a lot of cost for the entire ecosystem. At the same time, create a lot of positive word for healthcare industry because the misconception that Healthcare people, especially private healthcare people, are there only to make money. And the most hated subject in the world today is paid healthcare. You will go to a hotel, pay 50 dirham steps, but you will go come to my office to ask for 50 steps and sit for two hours for that. Because you think I'm there to make money out of a misery. But by doing this, by having this multidisciplinary approach and making it vocal and visible to people, I think we can do two benefits, saving to the ecosystem and positive word of mouth. Thank you. I think very well said, very well said. Do, doing this service, I mean, it's not just about making money, it's about serving the, the humanity and serving people. And I think also what Dr. Saleh said before about collaborating on a, looking at a bigger picture and collaborating for sustainable uh, solutions with the government for the healthcare industry can, you know, again go in the same direction as creating, uh, you know, serving the patient and serving the benefit of uh, of humankind. So I think that brings us uh, to the end of the panel discussion. Do we have time for questions? Okay, so we have time for questions. Uh, okay, I think we'll we'll have to pass on the microphones. Uh, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to ask my question. My name is uh, Dr. Mohamed Baraka. I'm the head of pharmacy department at Fatima College of Health Sciences. Um, today we heard a lot about digital health tools. We heard about digital therapeutics. We heard about virtual reality, wearables and sensors. We heard about data and data analytics and artificial intelligence as well. So the question now is, in the past we were depending on the Hakim or the wise man experience to treat diseases. And then we moved to the research, evidences, guidelines, and individualization of treatment. And 
then we moved to, now we are moving to the era of artificial intelligence and using large data in order to further personalize the management of diseases. Now I'm wondering, um, is it the time for evidence-based medicine to disappear and artificial intelligence to take over and find the best solution for our patients based on the best available evidence? Or I'm um, um, exaggerating and uh, it's a kind of prediction, but I'm, I'm not sure from your expertise if this is a, a kind of right prediction or a kind of exaggeration. Thank you very much. No, even if artificial intelligence has taken over, but it will always remain the evidence-based medicine to be practiced. Evidence-based practice will always be there. After that comes the artificial intelligence. Dr. Raza, you'd like to, I think you agree to it. I think we have the, we are in infancy. We have, no, it is fashionable now to talk about technology. But technology is available. Technology has to be integrated. But technology will be enabler. Like, for example, I'll give an example of AI. And AI is fashionable to talk about now. Today, AI, AI has to be supported. Like in radiology, suppose I'm a physician and I have a query for tuberculosis. I send the patient to radiology department to do x-ray. The typical a radiologist looks at there is no tuberculosis. But parallel reporting of AI says that there is a patch which could be malignant. So technology is supporting you. It is enabler. So what you are doing is it is helping you in identifying a problem which is not visible today, which could become a huge problem tomorrow in terms of life, in terms of expense, in terms of everything. But we are still in infancy. It has to be integrated and slowly we have to take it up because a lot of evolution, a lot of new things are coming up. But I think it is the way the healthcare is practiced today is going to transform and change in the next five years. Healthcare is going to move away from hospital, typical brick and mortar to home and comfortable environments. So we are in a very interesting times of our life, most exciting times of our life. But to make Tall claims today is, is a challenge, and we have to wait till the times thing mature, and it helps us. So today, like we are talking about digital twins today. The, 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 the drug trials, the way they are done today, are going to change totally. So everything will be done in a different environment, but we are in good times. We are in exciting times. So let's see how we, it shapes up in the next five years. Thank you. And Dr. Raza together. In fact, this is a very important thing that I, uh, it's very close to our heart and I and Mr. Asthana have discussed this in, at our corporate level. It's basically not a question, but I would like you to just elaborate to the audience that how important, in fact, interdisciplinary collaboration is not only all aspects of medical uh, understanding, the doctors, paramedics, and so and so technology. Uh, which we have a lot to talk and you have been emphasizing in our boardrooms also is that how important it is to get mental health and the geriatric health covered in the insurance. And why is it difficult and why is it important to actually, unless we could cover these things in the insurance because mental health and the geriatric health, which is the most talked about and yet most underpenetrated, how do you propose care health, which is yours as well? How do we take it forward and how does it really make an impact in society? This is my question number one to Mr. Asthana, who's my colleague. And the question number two is to Mr. Raza. Is that again, you know, these kind of systems, you know, when you're talking about elective surgery and you're talking about a lot of other things during the COVID days, how did the insurance cover here in Dubai in a way that it becomes 
very impactful and um, so that these kind of epidemics are not needed to become an epidemic to cover into insurance sector. Mr. Asthana, please. Uh, the life expectancy has gone up and insurance sector treat 60 plus people slightly badly. It's all right, but uh, the reality is that when you go to the health insurance chap, if you're 60 plus, the parameters are totally different for the insurance and the premium is very high. Second is your mental health. Mostly it is not covered under the health insurance. Now, I have uh, suggested them that these two aspects, if you mix uh, the ethical part or the human part into your business, that will greatly help a large number of population that uh, the, since the expectancy level uh, age has gone up, large number of people are in that group. So they will have a good feeling for the health sector. Mental health, of course, it's anybody's guess how good the people will feel if they are also covered under this scheme. Technology part, I wanted to tell you one thing. You are absolutely correct. It is an enabler to the doctor. And ultimately, the uh, clinical expertise of the doctor comes into play, whether it is technology or any other thing. Thank you. So, I would like to add on to uh, these two questions together. We are all in business to make money. But if money becomes prime objective, we cut corners. My take in life is success, excellence, has to come first. Money has to be a byproduct. Maybe typical businessmen may not agree to that, but I have practiced it and I have made money. Now, coming back to mental health and geriatric health, I will talk about a business model. In health insurance, patient loyalty is zero. Every year, people switch policies. So I have a solution. First of all, let me address mental health. Mental health is nothing. Mental health is People don't have somebody in life to talk to. That is the biggest problem. Loneliness is the biggest mental health problem. So if insurance companies, as part of package, could tie up with some uh, call centers in India where the psychiatric, psychological help is one minute away, that will not cost anything to you, hardly anything. But it will add great value to your policy that will give you niche and brand differentiation and that will create a stickiness to your policy. That is one thing that doesn't come expensive, but thing is people think if I do this, I will add money. No, with sm smart business planning and smart product development, it could be done. Second thing is coming back to geriatric care. I have lived with you for 20 years, paid you premiums. When it is time for me to consume healthcare, you're denying me. So what you can do is you can apportion amount of premium towards this. Then you can develop a product. You will stay with me for 20 years. And as a result of this, I will cover your geriatric period. So I think a portion could be apportioned, which could be part of, and some system could be uh, put into some investment, which could be used towards this going forward. Commitment to Society, community, and customer is prime. But I think we are insecure in business. And I have no hesitation in saying, if I'm confident in product development, I can tailor policies and create customer li loyalties for life. But again, the, 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 uh, the belief in transient life will not do such things. Example is this country, we are proud of this is my second home, the way they managed COVID, unimaginable. I think this was the only country where the government, the regulatory environment 
made it mandatory for all the insurance companies to cover COVID treatment. Because again, it is giving back to the community and society. You have made money throughout my life from me. When my time comes, you, you cannot write me off. So I think it is all about the, uh, the like-minded people of the ecosystem coming together and developing some strategies in the interest of community and society. Uh, money, again, has to be a byproduct. Again, money should not be the primary objective. That's my take on this. Thank you.